we go. Example nine. It says perform the multiplication and use the fundamental identities to simplify. So the first thing I'm going to do is say multiply. So we're going to do FOIL. So I would get cotangent squared x. Now the outer and the inner would cancel, and I would get minus cosecant squared x. Now, a Pythagorean identity is jumping out at me. 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for cosecant squared 1 plus cotangent squared x. Oops. And something I want you to notice is that if I am replacing cosecant squared x with a sum or difference, I need to subtract the entire sum or difference. So that's why I have parentheses there. So I have cotangent squared x minus 1 minus cotangent squared x. The cotangent squared x is cancel, and I have negative 1. Now if you think about it, if I came back over here to this Pythagorean identity, couldn't I have subtracted cosecant squared x and subtracted the 1 and have caught it right there, okay? So just another way to look at it. Example 10 says rewrite 1 over 1 plus sine x so that it's not in fractional form, okay? And that has calculus um, implications. That's why we would want to do this. So I could try multiplying by the conjugate. So in my numerator, that leaves me with just 1 minus sine x. In the denominator, if I FOIL that, I get 1 minus sine squared x. Now I hope at this level in pre-calculus that no one would try to cancel those sine x's because those are terms, and you cannot cancel terms. You can only cancel factors. And I don't want to factor it back out because then I'll be back to my starting point. So when I look at my denominator and I have 1 minus sine squared x, I should recognize from the Pythagorean identity that that's cosine squared x, isn't it? Yes? Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Now, the objective here was that I don't want to have a fraction. So, and I want to point something out to you. When you have a single term, and I want to do this with kind of to be silly here, or to be really, really just simple, is if you have, um, let's say, 3 over 1 plus 4, okay? You cannot do this because that's 3 fifths, and that's 3 and 3 fourths. Do you see that when it's a sum, and this would be true for a difference, However, if I said to you that I had 1 plus 4 over 3, that is 1 third plus 4 thirds. That's 5 thirds, 5 thirds. Those are equal, okay? So I want to point out to you in letters and, you know, unknown quantities are just representatives of numbers, okay? So I am allowed to do this here. 1 over cosine squared x, I know is secant squared x. Now I'm going to do some fancy trigonometry here and watch this. Watch this move. I've got sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. Do you see that? Like, I... This is a tool I want you to put in your tool belt or a strategy I want you to now be able to do. Do you see that I could break that apart that way? And so this would be secant squared x minus tangent x secant x. Now, it did say on a previous problem that you could get more than one answer. Do you see that from here, couldn't we have brought that up as secant squared x? Couldn't that have been sine x secant squared x? Yeah, and that would be an okay answer too. So sometimes you can get more than one answer. All right, any questions on?
on example 10. It's kind of cool. All right, example 11. <coughs> Rewrite tangent squared x over cosecant x plus 1 so that it's not in fractional form. So this is the same type. We're going to multiply by the conjugate, which would be cosecant x minus 1 over cosecant x minus 1. Remember, you want to leave the numerator in a factored form because the goal is to try to reduce it if we could. In the denominator, I get cosecant squared x minus 1. The whole point is to get rid of that outer inner. And then what do you know about cosecant squared x minus 1? Isn't it cotangent squared x? Yes? Okay. Now, and I'm going to put an extra step in here. I think some of you can skip it, but I'll put it in here just so there's no confusion. I know cotangent squared x is 1 over tangent squared x, isn't it? Yeah, cotangent squared is a reciprocal of tangent squared. Now that'll flip up and give me tangent to the fourth x times cosecant x minus 1. The goal here, it says write it so it's not a fraction anymore. I've accomplished that. Whether you want to distribute or not distribute, you can or can't. It doesn't matter. Okay? We've just met the goal. All right, last one. Example 12 says use the substitution that x equals 2 tangent theta, where theta is in the first quadrant, that's what 0 to pi over 2 means, to express the square root of 4 plus x squared as a trigonometric function of theta. All right, so let's start with four, the square root of 4 plus x squared. And it says we're going to substitute 2 tangent theta for the x. Okay, well let's see what we can do with this. 2 tangent theta when I square it would be 4 tangent squared theta. Okay, sorry I scrunched. That's 4 plus 4 tangent squared theta. I see a GCF of 4. And isn't 1 plus tangent squared theta equal to secant squared theta. So that's just 2 secant theta. 